Margaret, congratulations on winning the Pickering Medal. It's number one, a huge honour and really exciting to see a female role model actually winning this award. So tell me how you're feeling. Oh, pretty good about it. I think, I have to check the records, but I think I'm the first woman to win that award. So that feels really special. Um, and it feels special too because it's research that I'm really passionate about. This is a great opportunity to kind of recognize the work that's being done in the Light Metals Research Center because the award is for research that we did on fluoride emissions in aluminium smelting. And so what's unique about this award is it's award recognized the research of technology at an international scale. So let's talk a little bit about the international scale of this, what your experience was, where you went, what you've done. Well, interestingly, the research and its application actually started in New Zealand. So this is technology that's being used in the aluminium smelting industry. In terms of aluminium smelting, there are really two centres of excellence. One is in Norway and one in, is in New Zealand. So the research that's done in the Light Metals Research Centre is in demand globally. And you've had a fantastic year, Michelle. Been busy. The, the Callahan <laughs> Medal. So tell us, tell us about that. I'm really honoured to have the Callahan Medal, and it's it's really topped off an incredible two years for me um, in science communication. Obviously, it's a full-time academic. I do science full-time, but being able to talk about the science at a level that anybody can understand has been a real passion of mine to help people understand the difference between peer-reviewed scientific articles and a Facebook post that may or may not have good science behind it has been has been a real passion because I get lots of members of the public asking me is this true can you give me advice on this how do I research certain things organic food vaccination for kids climate change are the three top ones that I get and being able to find good sources I think is important it's been an incredible year and I'm humble and grateful and and like yours, it's a, it's a team environment, so the Science Media Centre, I'm not the only science communicator, there's a whole group of us working together to create this momentum towards making science interesting and accessible and available to all. You go out to a lot of schools, you have the opportunity to speak to lots of kids from lots of different backgrounds. What are the key messages that, that you get out to them about science? Engineering and science, we do have an issue with diversity and, and I'm really passionate about making sure that there's a full pipeline. I go out to schools and just show people how excited and passionate I am about what I do and why. And a lot of what I do is applied research, so you can see a solution. It's the same as, you know, why you're doing what you're doing. It's, it's seeing that solution from an idea that you had. Let kids and school kids see that Science is everywhere, it's all around them, it's not just in a lab, it's not just in a test tube and it can answer some really interesting questions about how the world works around them. If they want to make a career out of that, then go study science or engineering at university. As women engineers, as we both are, how does that play into, into what you do and into the communications message? As women engineers, sadly, we're still in the minority, but it's a it's a growing minority, and I, I think both you and I have worked really hard to be positive role models and showcase what it is to be a woman engineer. I think there's always this horrible stereotype of hard hats and steel toe cap boots, of which neither of us wear on a full-time basis, and also a diversity in personalities. So when I thought of women engineers, I'll admit I thought of a certain stereotype of which neither of us fit. We're feminine, we're fun, we have personalities and lives outside of engineering. And I think it's really important to be strong role models and showcase that there is diversity. I have to agree, and I, I've spent most of my career, you know, as you have, working in the minority. Um, and one of the things that I've really learned is that you just do it your own way. You don't have to do it the way the blokes do it. You, <laughs> you, yeah, you, you bring that femininity to it and you bring that different perspective and usually it's valued.